What's up guys, Matthew here, back at it again with another board game review. I actually just realized there was a broom back here and I've recorded like several videos with this thing back here. God damn it. Today we're looking at broom. It's a great cleaning device, it's a great tool uh, to get all the dirt and uh, dust off your floor. <laughs> Today we're going to look at a game called... <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Jesus, I am so off the ball today, man. Today, we're going to look at a game called Pandemic by Matt Leacock. You ever just wake up in the morning and think to yourself, man, wouldn't it be great to be a hero? Wouldn't it be great to alleviate the world's problems? Every virus swept off the face of this earth. Every human surviving these terrible diseases. Everyone living another generation, living another life, another life to live. If that's, how, is that, if that's what you were thinking, then perhaps it's time to get your ass out of bed and get yourself into a lab to play some Pandemic. But speaking seriously, it's a cooperative game where you're playing against the game itself in order to find four cures to four deadly diseases across the globe. And you along with your ragtag group of friends, are going to work together to try and find these four cures. The game takes place in a real-world map of the, the world, and you will be flying from place to place, uh, taking off viruses, setting up research stations, and the whole, the whole shebang to finally find an end to this virus madness that's spreading in the world. In this edition that I have, there are six classes, um, and I believe this edition is a newer one, so they added two more classes uh, to the regular character lineup. Uh, but uh, so if you're thinking about getting an older edition, you're going to be missing out on two of these characters. But essentially, you ha we have a medic, contingency planner, dispatcher, quarantine specialist, operations expert, and scientist. You and your teammates will be given one of these roles to play, and and, and you will harness your abilities, your special abilities, to try and beat the game. Each class has a special has a special ability that only that specific individual can do, which bypasses certain um, regular rules of play. There are two decks in the game. We have your play deck, and then you have your infections deck. The infection deck is where the game will play itself, and it will spawn uh, infections in certain areas of the world. The play deck is where players will be drawing cards from, and it will also include the infamous epidemic cards, or as I like to call it, um, super super not fun death cards. That That's canon. The way you set up your game is you draw nine cards from the infection deck separated into piles of three. The first three that you drew are the cities which will feature three cubes on at the beginning of the game. The second set will feature two cubes, and the third set will just feature one cube. And that's how you you open the board up. That's how you, the board uh, will start uh, when you play the game. There, there are a couple ways to lose this game. If your outbreak meter reaches, we, reaches the end of its rope, and we'll explain the outbreaks later. If the deck runs out before you find the four cures. And if you run out of one color of the virus cubes. If any one of these conditions are met, everybody loses. Let's talk about everyone's turn. The general rules of play is you have four actions, and your actions can be spread out in different ways. One action can be moving from city to city. Moving from city to city costs an action each time you move to a city. Taking off a cube from a space takes one action. So if there's three cubes on a space, it's going to take you three actions to get all three cubes off the space. Flying somewhere. If you have a, if you have a city card in your hand and you discard that specific city card, you can fly to that specific city, which costs an action. Alternatively, if you're on a city and you have a, a city card that matches the city you're standing in, then discarding that specific city card will let you fly anywhere. Building a research station, if you go to a city in which you have a card of, then discarding that specific card in the city that you're, you're in will allow you to build a research station, which will help you find cures. Finding a cure, if you discard five cards of the same color class, then you can cure that color disease. There's yellow, black, red, and blue diseases. 
You can fast travel from research station to research station without having to discard cards as an action. And finally, you can share knowledge, which is essentially meeting a player at a specific city to take uh, the card of the respected city that you're meeting in. You don't just have to take from a player. You can also give to a player. Again, if the conditions are met, like you're in the right city to give that specific card. Once you've completed your four actions, then you draw two cards. And after that, the game will play. So there's a little meter uh, under the infection deck in which it will tell you uh, how many cards that the infection is going to draw. So at the start of the game, the infection deck will draw two cards at the end of each and everyone's turn. But, at, but as you draw epidemics, then the meter will go up until you're drawing like four cards maximum. Just like when you set the game board, drawing a card from the infection deck will place a cube on the city that was drawn. A city can only hold a maximum of three cubes. If a fourth cube were to be placed on a specific city, then it outbreaks. And like I mentioned before, the outbreak meter, um, whenever there is an outbreak, then you move the meter on the board up one. If it's a double outbreak, the meter moves up two. Triple, same thing. Oh, baby, it's triple! When a city outbreaks, it places one cube onto its connecting cities. Now, as I mentioned before, we have epidemic cards, which are the, the bad cards that draw out of the player deck. Essentially, when you draw an epidemic on your turn, then you have to draw the bottom card from the infection deck and place three cubes on the city that you drew. After the three cubes have been placed on the city, then the, disc then the infection discard pile gets reshuffled and placed onto the top of the infection deck. This is to kind of like solidify the whole idea that once an epidemic occurs, it's going to occur into similar cities that have already been hit, which is, a, which is I think is just a brilliant convention. It, it just makes it makes it feel more immersive. And when you draw the epidemic, then you move the infection tile up one. And like I, like I mentioned before, the game will end once four cures have been found. So all you got to do is go to research station, have five cards ready of the color that you're trying to cure, and then discard them as an action to cure it. Additionally, although it doesn't count for completion, you can also eradicate diseases by, one, curing them, and then two, getting rid of all the cubes in that respective color area that have been cured. Cured diseases are easier to eradicate because once they are cured, then it only takes one action to lift all cubes off of one city, as opposed to one action per cube. However, choose your eradications wisely. Uh, don't focus too much on eradication if there's a lot of spread and you're running out of deck and you really got to get these four cures done. Like I said, once you once you find four cures, then the game is over, whether you eradicated something or didn't. The goal you get for eradicating a disease is whenever the infection deck will draw that specific color that was eradicated, you will never have to put cubes on that region. It's a huge bonus um, if you can get it fast. There are also event cards, um, which you can play at any time. And these event cards are like an airlift, a one quiet night, which can give you like, you know, a free night without having to use the infection deck. And a lot of, a lot of good bonuses that um, you can take advantage of. Again, you don't, you can, use these cards at any time. Um, they're little bonuses um, sprinkled throughout the uh, the player deck. But other than that, that's about it with the game. It's it's a fantastic game. A really easy to pick up. Although it like it looks very uh, complex from you know the get go and from like looking at the board and just the amount of options you might have. It's actually really simple to kind of get into it. It's all about who your character class is. Your character class will be dependent on your strategy, more or less. And trust me, you want to be doing as much as you can to win the game before the game beats you. It's a fantastic game. It gets people together. Um, I love cooperative games um, in general. I think, you know, competitive is fun, but just the idea of just working together instead of working against each other just, you know, mixes things up and just allows for some variants of gameplays. This is a this is up on the list of high, highly recommended. I can't recommend it enough. Anyway, thank you for watching this review on Pandemic. I, I hope you enjoyed it. And I hope that if, if nothing else, these videos are gonna 
inspire you to go out there and try these these games out or, or try and find us a, a game that you or a game or genre that you want to get into so leave a like if you enjoyed and um subscribe for more weekly board game content we've got a ton of it coming out dude so peace out boy